we are going to talk about the hill coefficient today. If you have watched my previous videos, you should know that this function is a rectangular hyperbola in the x-y coordinates. The curve shown in this plot is in a semi-log plot. From 1% response to 99% response, the curve on the x-axis should span over about 4 log units. This is true for all the equations in this form. fx equals a constant c1 times x over a constant plus x. The mathematical reason for why the curve should span over 4 log units is because the exponent of the independent variable is 1 in this form. But when you do the experiment, that those response curves you obtain may not span over 4 log units as this equation does. There is a possibility that the curve looks like this. It's much steeper. I'll draw the rectangular hyperbola in green. So this and this is 4 log units. But the red curve here to here is less than 4 log units. You can also have a more stretched curve like this. And from here to here, there are more than 4 log units. And now we have to introduce the Hill coefficient when the exponent of the independent variable is not necessarily 1. Let's write the y-axis as y. And it is the fractional signal. The equation of the fractional signal can be written as y equals 100 d to the power of the heel coefficient over k, which is constant, to the power of heel coefficient plus d to the power of heel coefficient. So when heel coefficient is 1, you have the green curve that spans over 4 log units on the x-axis. When you have heel coefficient less than 1, you have the blue curve. And uh, for the red curve, heel coefficient is bigger than 1. And there is a heel plot. The construction of a heel plot is the linearization of the semi-log plot we just saw. And the slope of the heel plot is the heel coefficient. The heel plot is plotted according to the heel equation which is written as log y over 100 of minus y equals the heel coefficient times log d minus nh log k. So on the y-axis of the heel plot, it is the log y over 100 minus y. On the x-axis, it's log d. And the slope is the heel coefficient. If the heel coefficient is 1, the slope is 1. The slope can be bigger than 1 or smaller than 1. So how do we get the heel equation? What is 100 minus y? It's 100 minus 100 d nh over k nh plus d and h that equals 100 k and h plus 100 d and h minus 100 d and h over k and h plus d and h so on the top this and this cancelled out so what you have is 100 k and h over k and h plus d and h. And what is y? y is 100 d and h over k and h plus d and h. So what is y over 100 minus y? It is this. So it is this term divided by this term. These two terms have the same denominator. So you have 100 d and h over 100 k and h. 
and this is d n h over k n h. You take the log of this value, so you have log y over 100 minus y equals log d n h minus k n h equals n h log d minus n h log k. So this is how you get the Hill equation. To get a rough estimation of the value of a Hill coefficient, you can observe how many log units the curve spans over on the x-axis. If the curve is a rectangular hyperbola, it spans four log units, Hill coefficient equals one. So you have to know span means from 1% of the response to 99% of the response. So when the curve is steeper and this spans over two log units, Hill coefficient equals two. So what if the curve is more stretched, say from here to here? There are eight log units, Hill coefficient equals 0 0.5. I won't go into details on why Hill coefficient equals two or 0 0.5 here. If you do the math, you can get it by yourself. This is just something to know. But looking at the span of the curve, you can get a rough estimation of the numerical value of the Hill coefficient. So when a Hill coefficient is bigger than one, that means there is a positive correlativity. For example, oxygen and the hemoglobin. The binding of the oxygen will promote the further binding. So the curve will be steeper the binding will be more favored. When the Hill coefficient is less than one, of course, there is negative correlativity. The binding process is not as good as a rectangular hyperbola. There are multiple reasons, one of which is that there are multiple sides of binding. For example, the binding can start from this side, say site one, but ends at site two. So here is all for the Hill coefficient.